Hello, my name is Luke Carrier, and this is NY Who, the only radio show on campus that reports word of mouth news and asks the question, NY Who said that? On today's show, we have a literal child who was quoted saying, Hello, for my arts and crafts day, I made a really cool website called Brightspace. Now, let's find out. NY Who said that? Hi, my name is Jackson, and I'm six years old. You're seven now, Jackson. Oh, right. I'm seven years old. <laughs> I like trains, coloring. I designed a learning management system called Brightspace, and I got dressed by myself today. <laughs> That's right, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> well, I'm Stella Rama, the director of technology services here at NYU and the mom of this little stinker right here. <laughs> and today, we're here to talk about your little project, huh? Yeah. <laughs> Arriving with a freshly spaghetti sauce stained shirt and fiercely gripping a foam protected iPad, Jackson was led into the NYU recording studio by his mother nearly 50 minutes past the scheduled start of our interview. My god, I am so sorry. We had a really hard time getting out of the door today, didn't we? Mom, I was playing Clash of Clans! Jackson, I told you no more device time when Mommy gets home from work. I was in the middle of a raid! You know how long it takes to load up a goblin? I don't care what you were in the middle of. When Mommy says no devices, I mean it. I am so sorry about this. No, no, it's okay. Jackson, what level town hall do you have? Eleven. Damn, respect. Jackson, what can you tell me about Brightspace? Uh, well, last year I was I was in first grade, and now I'm in uh, second grade, which is the one where you turn seven. <laughs> and and when I was in first grade, which is when we turned six, um, well, we had this art class where we would go uh, to build and craft and make some things for, for arts and crafts time. And, well, I found my mom's computer, and I opened it up, and it was um, these two uh, big men, and they were um, they they were uh, kind of I guess uh, dancing real close, and um, they had minimal costuming, and I just thought, well, I just learned how to read, and I I did not know who Jenny Sins was, it was so I I just decided I would um. Well, I got bored, so I I just type and and I and I type and I made a couple of comments and then and then I found some programming and so yeah, then I made Brightspace. Jackson, how old are you? <laughs> okay, Jackson. Yeah. Yes. Yes, sir. What can you tell me about Brightspace itself? Oh, ah. Uh... Well, I guess you would say um, that Brightspace is a cloud-based learning platform that will enable NYU faculty to use web-based collaborative and assessment technologies to enhance the teaching and the learning experience where instructors can use the service to design full-featured online course environments for the participants of their class and participants may access course materials, collaborate with others, engage in interactive assessments and assignments, and track their progress in a course gradebook. <laughs> Animated all by myself. Uh, Mom, can I have my banana slices? <laughs> sure, sweetie. Mm. Jackson, what are some elements that you included to make Brightspace usable and efficient for members of the NYU community? <laughs> well, uh, every time you use Brightspace, you have to sign in with your multi-factor multi authentic authentication. And when you call the helpline, there's always a two-hour wait because exactly four people work at the NYU IT department. Uh, Mark, Craig, Greg, and Janice. Uh, and there's always a two-hour wait because these people are very slow. They had a hard time getting jobs at Radio Shack, but we hired them right away. And so it's really hard to navigate. But, uh, most of the time, you submit a link to your paper on a uh, on a Google Doc, and it doesn't work when your professor posts grades. And it takes two weeks for them to show up in order for all the 90 discussion post notifications to go away, and you have to read all 90 discussion posts individually. Jackson. None of those things seem to make Brightspace usable or efficient for members of the NYU community. But you do have a fantastic vocabulary for a seven-year-old. I have to go pee. Oh. Well, they just don't make kids like they used to. <laughs> Stella. As the director of technology services at NYU, what did you think when you found this brand new platform on your computer? I peed! 
Jesus Christ, that was fast. I peed. He's very fast. I pee fast. Ah, well, Stella, what did you think when you found this brand new platform on your computer? Honestly, a huge weight was lifted off my shoulders. Coincidentally, I had been assigned to create pretty much the same f***ing type of thing that Jackson made months before. Like most other administrative members of NYU, I'm a huge procrastinator, which explains why nothing ever gets done around here. Listeners, the reason your fresh-pressed sandwich from Upstein took 35 minutes to make is because Randy, the guy in charge of food management, is addicted to Minecraft and has been putting off hiring new staff members for weeks. Anyway, there was no f***ing way I was going to finish this learning management system thing before my deadline. But lo and behold, my seven-year-old just went ahead and did it for me. It's shit and absolutely terrible to use, but for some reason when I turned it in, it got accepted. Again, this kid didn't know anything about my work or anything. Oh, they just don't make kids like they used to. Or, I don't make kids like I used to. Wait. In other news, the president of the NYU robotics team was recently quoted saying, Yeah, the killer robot we accidentally built is actually much less bad than expected. Total fucking bummer. Here's more. Hi, my, my name is Jay McDougal, and I'm the president of the NYU Robotics team. Um, the mighty Manhattan machines. They, they came up with the names before I got here. Anyway, last month the team was tinkering around with our robot, you know, as, as robotics teams do, and, and all of a sudden the robot's LED eyes turned from this white to a, a piercing red, and, and it turned its head all scary-like towards us, you know, as evil robots do. And now, now I promise that this occurred by pure accident and, and an uncontrollable ambition. But... When we realized that we had an evil and probably killer robot on our hands, I mean, we were pretty excited. I mean, how, how cool is that, right? Huh. Well, that's awesome. Right? But, 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 but here's the thing. Um, it's definitely a killer robot, but it, it's really more of a long-term killer robot. What do you mean? Well, I mean, like, it, it kills people, but, but over the long term, in, in, in kind of lame ways. Uh, like, for example, I've caught it sneaking pure trans fat into my food. Like, like twice over the last week, and there's no signs of it stopping. Now, I'm probably going to die of some f***ed up heart disease or something, and, and it gave my friend Clint HIV AIDS, and we're not sure how it did this, but Ava has dementia now. She's like 19, and it, it f***ing sucks. Wait, so it's a killer robot, but it doesn't even use guns or lasers? Oh, it's definitely a killer robot. But, yeah, no giant claws, explosives, or anything like that. Just syringes full of sickle cell disease and little packets of, eventually, deathly amounts of sodium. And that's the other thing. Everyone on the robot team is f***ed, right? Like, I mean, like, we're all definitely gonna die now. But because we're <laughs> such good coders, we made sure that the robot won't ever start another task without finishing the first. So it can't move on to kill anyone else, let alone the world, until we're all dead. Which won't be for another, like, 50 years. It just... It's all kind of underwhelming and disappointing. Well, it's like Mick Jagger always said. You can't always get what you want. But if you try sometimes, you just might find. But dunk up, but dunk up, but dunk up, but you get what you need. Heed. Thank you for your time, Jay. Hmm. Uh, thank you, Luke. Well, that's all the time we have. This has been another episode of NY Who, the only radio show on campus that reports word of mouth news and asks the question, NY Who said that? My name is Luke Carrier. And I'll see you next week. Hi, I'm Sarah, and I used to be on the swim team. That makes me pretty special. This episode of NY Who was produced by Luke Wisniewski and Asta Vige and distributed by WNYU. The cast of this episode included Luke Wisniewski, Max Zorn, Catherine Humes, and Mackenzie McCracken. Theme music composed by Benjamin Tissett. Special thanks to Jack Peterson for his help and support. This episode of NYU was supported by Thanksgiving. 
potato starch, processed pumpkin guts, and the celebration of British colonizers taking advantage of the generosity of Native Americans never tasted so damn good. Thank you, Thanksgiving, for your support.